So this video is going to go over the different types of or test questions that are available in Blackboard Ultra. Some of these may be subject to change as more questions get added, but this is just a quick overview of what is available at the moment. So what I'm actually going to show is the sample test that was previous to this in the learning module, where you are able to actually go through, and I'm gonna show you some of the question types and name them as we go. The first question type on your list, just by clicking that plus button once you create a test. The first option here is auto-generate questions. This is by far one of my favorite tools. It is some of the most time-saving, um, and it is purely dependent on how much you are utilizing Blackboard and how much you're integrating within. So your options here are to provide a short description, or my personal favorite is selecting the class items. So it'll actually pull up a menu for me to look at the current class that I have, and within here, I'm able to go ahead and I'm able to click a section and then click multiple different topics to generate questions from. So I went ahead and I've just clicked on the previous learning module. These are the three sections that I have content in. I'm gonna say select. And it is going to auto-generate questions based on content that was in those three, do three documents or those three sections. So from here, you can choose your question type. Inspire Me is just a range of questions different question types. You can choose how complex you want the questions to be answered, and then you can pick how many you would like to be generated. You'll hit the generate button. And again, this is using the AI built within Blackboard. So any of the AI tools that are within Blackboard, this is running that same prompt. As it's generating, it will spin for a second. One of the best parts about this is that you don't have to use all of the questions. You don't have to use any of the questions. But by clicking on the little box to the side, I can actually select which questions make the most sense for me and add them into my assignment. Let's say I don't actually want an essay question, so I might skip it. And you'd be able to go through the correct answers are marked and see which ones best fit. You are able to edit these afterwards. So if something isn't quite right or you don't like the wording on it, after you click this add to assignment button, you will be able to go back and edit them to make them reflect exactly what you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. Next on the list is adding a question pool. If you have already created assessments in this course previously, you'll be able to actually go back and find those questions to reuse them. Okay. So right here you can see that I have one, a set of questions that were part of the last assignment that I could actually reuse and put in here without issue. Adding a calculated formula question or a calculated numeric question are both math-based question types. Here's an example of one. As I go in, it allows me to put in the math prompt. Using the insert content button and the math button, I'm actually able to get my full formulaic keyboard up so I can add in any of the complex math equations that I might need. Then I'm able to put in a correct number with a set mathematical rule and I am able to allow a range of answers. So if I do want it to be a range that is accepted, I have that option there. Next down our list is an essay question. That is your standard text box. Fill in and write the prompt. Okay. Fill in the blank questions were actually used down here for question number six. Fill in the blank questions allow you to type out what you would like your sentence to read by using the brackets. Okay. So if I wanted to add another blank here and let's say, and test, this does make the set statement incorrect. Okay. But I would type out my sentence and put brackets around the two blanks that I would like. From here I hit next step and it auto generates blank one and blank two for me. It puts in what the correct answer was and then I can choose how precise I want this to be. Um, if I want it to be exact word for word, if I want it to have the word test in it somewhere, if I want it to match a pattern, this is how I can adjust all of my fill in the blank questions. Okay? As well as you are allowed um, to do partial credit. So if one is correct and one is not, you're able to adjust that way as well. All right, that is your fill in the blank question. The hotspot question was actually right below this for question number seven. A hotspot question allows you to put in an image and students actually tap or click on a location in the image that you deem as one of the correct spaces. So if I go ahead to edit, I get to put in my prompt telling students what I would like them to do. 
and then I upload an image of my choosing. So I did the list of different question types, and then you define what is the correct answer. You can use a variety of different shapes, and you can add more than one. So if I get rid of the correct answer, now you can see this could be a correct answer, this could be a correct answer, and students will actually tap on the image to select what the correct answer is. You are able to adjust the different spaces and the different blocks accordingly, and then obviously erase and delete. Um, examples of how this might be used in a classroom setting, if you have a food web and you want to have students identify which is the producer, if you have a complicated mathematical proof and you want students to identify where the error has occurred, um, there are a huge limitless range of options that this is able to provide you um, using everything from anchor charts and pictures of your classroom, pictures of labs, things you've done, to images that you find in your text, your resources, or online. This is a very different type of assessment tool that we don't usually think of when we think of the types of questions that we have in a platform like Blackboard. Moving down, you have a matching question type okay. that exists up here where you are matching the different prompts to the different answers. You're able to pop open the prompts and the answers type them out and then you're also able to add distractors or things that don't quite match. If you don't want them, you don't have to use them and you can also define what percentage of credit each answer would allow the student to get, um, including negative answers if you so choose. Down from there you have your standard multiple choice and your standard true false questions. This is a multiple choice question right here. As we pop in you can see you get the different options, you click which one is correct. Um, true and false look the same way, except for the fact they have true populated in one box and false in the other. And then you just toggle between the check boxes on the side to determine the correct answer. Reusing questions and adding question pool are very similar. When you generate a question that you want to use repeatedly over and over, you can add it to the pool. Otherwise, all the questions are saved in the reuse question section. If you also are generating questions from an outside source, say a curricular resource, um, or questions that you've used for previous assessments, you are able to upload them via a file. You're able to add in just informational text, local files like PDFs, um, or something from the cloud storage, which is something that is part of the Blackboard cloud storage specifically. All of these different tools are here within a single test or single quiz option. And you'll see as you go through the learning resource how to navigate and utilize all of these different test settings on the side to ensure that it is actually assessing what you want students to be assessed on.